Страна по нашите. Да? Да? Да, така. Да, така. You know what I've been learning a little about? Suture. Suture. Fascinating. You going somewhere? As a matter of fact, I was. Yeah, I don't want to hold you up. But I found out all about the different kinds. You know, they have uh, permanent suture and that there's dissolving suture. Exactly what is your point, Lieutenant? Hmm. What is your point, Lieutenant? What exactly is your point? So here's my point. Here's, here, I'm a, I'm Columbo. What's your point, Colombo? Here's the point. Robert Mueller, right? Robert Mueller. And now Julian Assange is in custody, right? It's fascinating because Julian Assange holds many, he holds the key to many, many unanswered questions. But here's the big one, right? Here's the one that, that had me thinking all night, had me tossing and turning all night. In his report, Robert Mueller concluded that the Russians hacked the DNC and gave information to Julian Assange, right? That's what he said. We're going to look at that review. We'll, we'll look at that document, and we'll, I'll show you where he says it, right? Now, how is it possible that Julian Assange was not indicted by Robert Mueller for conspiring with Russia, right? If, if Julian Assange conspired with Russia, then Robert Mueller would have indicted Julian Assange for conspiring with Russia, on the Nidas Espionage Act. Why didn't he do it? Because there's no evidence to suggest that he did, right? After all, if Russia gave Julian Assange emails, as Mueller says, Assange would have been indicted under the Espionage Act, right? That's fair to say, right? Now, let's continue, right? So, so Donald Trump yesterday, right, the President of the United States, said this. Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. And uh, I know there is something having to do with uh, Julian Assange. I've, I've been seeing what's happened with uh, Assange, and uh, that will be a determination, I would imagine, mostly by the Attorney General, who's doing an excellent job. So he'll be making a, a determination. I know nothing really about him. It's not my, it's not my deal in life. What would you like to see happen? What punishment? I don't. I don't really have any opinion. I know the attorney general uh, will be involved in that, and he'll make a decision. Okay. So he has. So now, Julian. So so the president of the United States, Donald Trump, is saying, "I don't know WikiLeaks. What? I I, I don't even have an opinion. I don't even remember what Wiki. What Wiki, WikiLeaks? What's WikiLeaks? Did I ever hear of WikiLeaks? Wiki. Oh, WikiLeaks is uh, Assange. Yeah, I remember that. I, I don't know anything about it. Right." But you remember during the election? You remember during the election? He was—he uh, he wasn't really saying that. He was saying—he uh, was saying this stuff. Right? WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. I love WikiLeaks. These WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, as confirmed just today by WikiLeaks. It's been amazing what's coming out on WikiLeaks. They want to distract us from WikiLeaks. The wonder of WikiLeaks. Boy, that WikiLeaks has done a job on her, hasn't it? We've learned so much. From WikiLeaks. Oh, we love Wiki. WikiLeaks has done a job on her, huh? WikiLeaks, boy, they have really WikiLeaks. 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 I mean, this WikiLeaks is fascinating. The WikiLeaks revelations. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, right? WikiLeaks. And you know, as I was getting off the plane, they were just announcing new WikiLeaks, and I wanted to stay there, but I didn't want to keep you waiting. I love reading those WikiLeaks. 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 Just right, so you get the point, right? So, so there he is saying it, WikiLeaks. But how come he doesn't know nothing about it over here? But now, but but uh, a year ago, he knew all about it, right? So, so that there's there's a there's evidence in there. We're going to try to figure out why Trump is now suddenly gone mute on WikiLeaks. And Julian Assange, is he throwing him under the bus? Or is he playing 4D, 5D, 12D chess as Donald Trump? Everything Donald Trump says is 5D chess. Well, let's try to figure it out. So, so back to, the, to, to my initial argument, which is if, if Assange, hold on a second. <laughs> let, me, let me just review it again. If Robert Mueller concluded that the Russians hacked the DNC, and gave information to Julian uh, to Julian Assange. 
In his report, he said that, right? How is it possible that Assange wasn't indicted? So let's just prove that. Let's just prove that one part right here. So here's the Mueller, here's uh, Robert Burr's assessment um, summary of Robert Mueller's report. And it says, the second element involved the Russian government's efforts to conduct computer hacking operations designed to gather and disseminate information to influence the election. The special counsel found that Russian government actors successfully hacked into the computers and obtained emails from persons affiliated with the Clinton campaign and Democratic Party organization and publicly disseminated those materials through various interdisciplinary intermediaries, including WikiLeaks. Right? Based on these activities, the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian military officers co- for conspiring to hack into computers in the United States for purposes of influencing the election. But as noted above, special counsel did not find that Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in these efforts, despite multiple offers from Russian affiliate individuals to assist the Trump campaign. So what does that say? It says that Russian, according to Mueller's witch hunt, they said they found Russian uh, uh, Russian people, <laughs> Russian military operatives who, who hacked the election, who hacked the DNC the Democratic Party and other stuff. Now, when we talk about here's the other thing that it's very why it's very vague, right? And I, I'm just going to continue. Just continue with me for a second. Here's why it's vague, because first of all, there's DNC emails, right? There's John Podesta's emails. There's the D Triple C emails. There is Hillary Clinton's emails, and who the hell knows what other stuff was inside of the DNC apparatus uh, and made available to the public. Now, there's there's a I'm going to show you a guy. His name is uh what is his name? Bill uh William uh Bill Benny, right? We'll talk about what Bill Benny in a second. And he suggests that the it's impossible that information leaked out from was was hacked from the DNC based on NSA his research into the NSA, his his experience as an NSA operative. And he says that it's not, it's just not possible. Now, whether that's the truth or not, or factual or not, doesn't really matter. What does matter is that there were so many ways to access the emails and the information inside of the DNC that even a small even a a child with basic computer skills could have done it, right? They hacked. They they stole passwords. John Podesta left his, his desk with the with his with his Gmail account open. Hillary Clinton was traveling the country with a with a hackable BlackBerry, using a server in her her apartment in her uh, house in Ch- Chappaqua, New York. Right. None of it was secure. It was all on unsecure servers. So the idea that somehow it required military operatives, Russian military operatives to access this information is rather ridiculous. And of course, Julian Assange has no, Julian Assange is a publisher in the, in the, in the whole uh, scenario, but, but also, so, so you had, you also have Imran Awan, the, the spy ring in Congress. Now remember that Imran Awan was Debbie Wasserman Schultz's IT guy. Right? And he was also the IT guy for a lot of congressmen, probably a group of 20. So Imran Awan had access to all of their email information. He also obviously had access to the DNC server information. Why? Because he had Debbie Wasserman Schultz's passwords. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was the head of the DNC. Right? Is it is it unthinkable that the that the is it possible that the head of the DNC didn't have the passwords? to the DNC server. To, she didn't have access. Of course she did, right? So, so many paths, so many avenues of uh, 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 stealing or removing the information from the DNC and dumping it on WikiLeaks, right? So many possibilities of that happening. Now, the the one that is still a mystery and because not a lot of people have come forward with it. Why? Because 
because of Seth Rich. You remember the, the kid that got shot in, in D.C.? Uh, we'll talk more about that in, in a second. Let's, but now let's look at, let's, let's go here, right? So, so Mueller, in his own words, said that Russians hacked the, the uh, election, right? I don't believe that that's what happened at all, right? Uh, obviously, right? Right, so, so here we go. The, the primary purpose of the conspiracy was to facilitate Manning's acquisition and transmission of classified information related to national defense of the United States, and WikiLeaks could publicly disseminate the information on its website. Right? That's, all, that's all Julian Assange is, is guilty of. The conspiracy that, 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 uh, that he's now trying to be tried on is that he participated in the hacking of the, uh, the hacking of what Chelsea Manning was looking at. And that's just factually incorrect, right? There was, he didn't hack. What he did was he asked Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Manning asked him for uh, assistance with a password, with, with the cracking of a password, so that Chelsea Manning could hide his or her identity from the people that might have found it out. All right. What I, what I'm trying to say is that there's really there's really no. Julian Assange would have been indicted for Russian for for espionage if in fact he was he was involved in the uh, he was involved in the DNC hack with Russia. He would have been indicted, right? And now he is indicted, but not for that stuff at all, for something that happened 10 years ago, right? That's all I'm trying to say, right? So Mueller's report falls flat on its face is really what I'm trying to say, because if we can, dis if we can discern who actually leaked the DNC information to, to WikiLeaks, and it was in Russia, that is, that is a game changer. That makes it clear that Russia is a scapegoat and had 100%, 100% nothing at all to do with, with election rigging. And if Russia didn't have anything to do with it, and they've been saying all along that the, the Democratic National Committee, the DNC was hacked, right? And it wasn't Russia, then it had to have been someone else. Understand? Eliminate Russia... And it has to be somebody else, is what, what I'm trying to say. Right? So here's a guy, Bill Binney, right? Then I've got to dwell on this guy too long. Let's look at what he had to say. He's a he's obviously a D uh, uh, NSA whistleblower. Binney claimed that the email theft was committed by an insider at the DNC, also helped fuel one of the more bizarre conspiracy theories that has gained traction on the right. That the murder of a young DNC staffer. Uh, last year was somehow connected to the data. Ben, Benny said he mentioned the case of Seth Rich to then CIA director Mike Pompeo during his meeting. All right, so does Pompeo, does, does Trump and all these guys know the, the actual connection to Seth Rich? Yes, they do. All right, so here's, listen, listen to Benny in his own words. Um, just over the past few days, or actually over the past few weeks, we've also had the release of the report by Bob Mueller concluding that the Trump campaign had not colluded with Russia in the election, although it did include as a tacit assumption that Russian hacking was an attempt by the Russian government to throw the election to Donald Trump, an assertion that was not ch challenged by Attorney General Barr in his summary of Mueller's findings. Now, despite this, Mueller has stated that he is concerned and planning to investigate what was going on with Russiagate. I'd like to play a clip from Barr and then get your thoughts on this. I, I think spying on a political campaign is a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, generation I grew up in, which was the Vietnam War uh, period, you know, people were all concerned about spying on uh, anti-war people and so forth by the government. And there were a lot of rules put in place to make sure that there's an adequate basis before before our law enforcement agencies get involved in poli you know, political uh, surveillance. I'm not suggesting that 
those rules were violated, but I think it's important to look at that. And I'm not just, I'm not talking about the FBI uh, necessarily, but intelligence agencies more broadly. So you're not, you're not suggesting though that spying occurred? I don't, uh, well, uh, I guess you could, I, I think there was a spying did occur. Yes, I think spying did occur. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty powerful, right? So, so what, when, uh, we'll get back to many in a second. I just want to power, I just want to add to it, right? So, it, it, Bill, th- this guy right here, this, this attorney general, William Barr, is he in cahoots with Trump? Is, are they working together in a strategy to bring Assange to, to American soil and have, Assange reveal exactly what happened in the DNC and blow the whole thing wide open? It's unlikely because if that's the case, then do you know how many do you know how many people you would incriminate? Not just the people that are uh, Trump uh, enemies like Obama, Loretta Lynch, James Comey, but also the very guys in his his administration, which is is Mike Pompeo, the then CIA director, right? And, and uh, Mnuchin, all these guys, right? All the guys that are surrounded by, surrounding Trump right now. Well, let's continue with my next point. So the, the fact that the, you're right. So this is where, you know, we, we at LaRouche Pack have said that the, uh, the whole Russia gate thing has to turn around and actually become uh, Mueller gate about what was involved in creating this investigation in the first place and the improprieties there. The central theme, though, is going to have to be taking apart the Russia hack myth. Now, you've been very outspoken on that. You've, you've appeared on this uh, website and many, many websites around the world many times on this topic. The fact that you were one of very few people, including Julian Assange, who is able to speak with a certain level of expertise and knowledge about whether Russia hacked the election and so forth, what implication do you think it has on getting to the bottom of Russia Gate if Julian Assange is arrested and, uh, you know, what, what effect do you think this arrest has on the ability to get to the bottom of this matter? Uh, well, I, I don't think uh, his arrest will have any effect on your ability to do an investigation in this matter. I mean, all, all I have to do is investigate the NSA databases, uh, plus look at the published data uh, that WikiLeaks posted um, on the DNC and uh, Podesta and all. And the evidence is already there. The forensic evidence that it was not a hack is very clear and dem- demonstrable in a court of law. So let's have at it. Let's go into a court of law and let's demonstrate this and for everybody to see. I mean, the point is <clears throat> that uh, there's no evidence whatsoever that anything that WikiLeaks published is in any way connected with a hack or the Russians. So, so that's Bill Benny con- confirming, concluding in his own mind that it was not a hack based on his experience as an NSA whatever computer guy that understands that stuff, right? But, but more so, he concludes that nothing had anything to do whatsoever with Russia. Right? Now, who exactly, you got to roll the clock back, right? Who exactly did we suspect at the time was the DNC leak? Here's the other thing. What, look at, look at uh, Julian Assange's uh, MO, right? His modus operandi is he deals directly with the whistleblower. You see how he's dealing directly with Chelsea Manning? In, in his own, in these depositions, you see that they were communicating. Assange was coaching him how to dump, what he needs, what he wants. All legal as, from, from a publishing perspective, right? Julian Assange is not a whistleblower. Julian Assange is the publisher of information, whether it's whistleblowing or leaking or whatever. It's a whist- the, the person inside the DNC is the whistleblower. Julian Assange is the publisher of the information. Just understand the terminology, right? Understand who is who. Because if you start calling Julian Assange a whistleblower, which he's not, he's blown many, I mean, he's exposed so many different crimes. We also have to understand that Julian Assange, what he exposes, what he exposed through WikiLeaks is so precious, right? War crimes in Iraq, American criminal activity and war crimes that he exposed for people to see. Why? So, so you could stop doing it, right? So people can say, oh, shit, 
look, we're the criminals. Look, look what we're doing. We're the terrorists, right? And that's what that's what that information uh, does. Whether it puts troops on the ground at risk or not, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter because they they're, they're involved in criminal activity. Get out of there, right? And what Julian Assange has revealed about the DNC that the, the elections are fake. It tells you that it's the DNC, the Democratic Party, is not, it's not a real election. And you go one step further and you realize how much our country spends on, on you know, elections and, and election booths and election procedure and cops and polling stations and machines and tallies. You know, millions of dollar apparatus for a fake election. That's what the DNC leak reveals, that it was... It was fraudulent that it was rigged against Sanders for Hillary Clinton. That's what it reveals. And that is the big takeaway, right? So now, so now that we know if Bill Benny is right and Russia had nothing to do with it, and we're all right that, that there were a thousand other ways that that information could have gotten out, and it had nothing to do with any Russian agents, but more, more so a leak, Let's look at what, what this is the this is the thing that this is the the golden key right here. Listen to this. Here's Julian Assange in his own words telling you who how the information got to him in his own words. It's had a disastrous few weeks. If you look at the polls, he needs a miracle. Um, in the American political lexicon, there's such a thing as the October surprise. The stuff that you're sitting on, is, is an October surprise in there? We Do you even know what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So. That was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So, uh, that's what are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they, are, they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean, we don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion? about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are uh, in the United States and that our sources are, you know, our sources face serious risks. Uh, that's why they come to us, so we can protect uh, their anonymity. Uh, but it's quite and, something to suggest a murder. So, that's basically what you're doing. Well, that others have, have suggested that. Uh, we are investigating to understand uh, what happened uh, in that situation with Seth Rich. I think it is uh, a concerning situation. I, there's not a conclusion yet. We wouldn't be willing to um, state a conclusion, but we are concerned about it. And more importantly, um, a variety of WikiLeaks sources are concerned when that kind of thing happens. Donald Trump has had... Whoa. So Julian Assange, the, the point I want to try to make here is that you see how Julian Assange deals with, with uh, whistleblowers, right? You see how, he's, how he dealt with um, Chelsea Manning. We now have the court deposition. We can look at it and see how Julian Assange, someone reaches out to Julian Assange. <clears throat> Chelsea Manning, by the way, offered that information, I believe, to the New York Times and the Washington Post. And they turned them down, and Julian Assange took it, right? So Julian Assange, the publisher, is now working with the source to get the information. You see he's, he's giving him assistance, he's giving him advice, right? And then finally Chelsea Manning says, that's all, that's all I got, right? So, so, so that, is, that is the modus operandi of how Julian Assange works. Now, when you view Seth Rich and what you just heard it is likely Seth Rich was 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 an individual that was apparently gunned down in Washington on, on a street corner. There's never been a forensic study of it. There's no ballistics. There's no autopsy. There's no photograph. There's absolutely nothing. The whole history of Seth Rich's 
the incident in D.C. has been either withheld or, or it never really happened. There is speculation that he was picked up and beat the shit out of and maybe, you know, disposed of, or he was, in fact, some, maybe he was a, a spy of some sort. Nobody really knows, but what we do know about Seth Rich is that he was not, he was not murdered on the street at that time, in that place in Washington, D.C., uh, as the uh, as the official narrative tells us. It simply just didn't happen, right? No autopsy. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing about it. The other thing is that, that you now have Julian Assange in custody, and you have his testimony to the media, right, looking out into the camera, telling you, basically without telling you, that Seth Rich was the leak, right, and he was working with him. Now, did Seth Rich give all of the information oh, that, that, that eventually became public? Probably not, because, again, I told you all the different possibilities of leaks. There was Imran Awan. There was Hillary Clinton moving around with a, with a BlackBerry and being able to be, you know, that information being um, uh, siphoned. There's, there was so many crooked politicians inside with access uh, to that information, right? So... Seth Rich could have been one part of it. He could have been the sum total of it. He could have been the guy that the tipping point in it. Nonetheless, the summation, again, I'll read it to you again. Right? In, in, his, report, in his report, Robert Mueller concluded, the Russians hacked the DNC and gave information to Julian Assange. How is it possible that Julian Assange was not indicted by Robert Mueller for conspiring with Russia? After all, if Russia gave Julian Assange emails, as Mueller says, Assange would have been indicted under the Espionage Act. The answer is this. Russia didn't ha give him any emails. Russia didn't give the emails to, to Julian Assange. Someone else did. And that's what we're about to find out. Uh, that's what Julian Assange can offer us in a final analysis. Is he, tr is he a traitor to his, his source? Is he, is, is he being disloyal to his source? No, at, at this point, the source is dead or theoretically dead. Give it up, man. Give it up. Marcus Conti reporting.